In this video presentation, we will see about the different biochemical test for the identification of the bacteria. The diagnosis of the bacterial infection can be done based on the clinical signs and the symptoms of the disease, but it gives only the tentative identification. But for the definitive identification, the laboratory examination is necessary. By the laboratory examination, we can identify the causative bacterial agent for the infection. But for that, the correct sample from the patient has to be collected based on the clinical signs. First, the collected sample can be subjected for the direct microscopic examination by performing the different bacterial staining techniques, like the gram staining, the acid fast staining, the negative staining, the spore staining, and the motility test. Next, by culturing the bacteria onto the different types of bacterial culture media, like the differential media, the selective media, the enriched media, and the enrichment broth. And next, by the biochemical tests. This test will be detailed in this video presentation. Next, by the serological test, like the slide agglutination test, the tube agglutination test, and the microscopic agglutination test. And next, by using molecular techniques, like the PCR, followed by the DNA sequencing. And lastly, the phage typing, that is, the bacterial identification, by using the bacteriophages. These are the laboratory methods and the strategy followed for the bacterial identification. Only by the microscopic examination and by the culturing technique, the complete identity of the bacteria is not possible. For instance, the bacteria producing the pink colonies on the McConkie's agar, when subjected to the microscopic examination, will shows the gram negative bacilli, which may be the E. coli, the Klebsiella, or the Citrobacter. So, the genus and species level bacterial identification is achieved by subjecting the bacterial culture to various biochemical tests and other techniques. The biochemical test. This helps in the identification of the bacterial genus and the species, sometimes even the subspecies too. This is achieved by subjecting the bacterial culture to the various biochemical tests. The various bacteria has its inherent property to produce the different types of the enzymes and the substances. In addition, the various bacteria also has its inherent property to ferment or to utilize the different types of the sugars and the substrates to yield the different types of byproducts. This can be identified by subjecting the bacterial culture to the various biochemical tests. First, we see about the catalase test. The principle. Certain bacteria produce the enzyme, the catalase. This enzyme, along with the hydrogen peroxide, capable of decomposing the hydrogen peroxide to the water and the oxygen. The release of the oxygen is observed as the bubbles or the effervescence formation. This is the principle behind the catalase test. The procedure. Take a glass slide. Place 0.5 ml of the hydrogen peroxide over the slide. Then, emulsify the bacterial colony to the hydrogen peroxide. If there is no bubbles or no effervescence observed, indicates the test is negative. The example, the streptococcus bacterial organism, negative for the catalase test. In contrast, if the bacterial colony, once emulsified with the hydrogen peroxide, produce bubbles or effervescence indicates the test is positive the example the staphylococcus bacterial organism positive for the catalase test this is the procedure for the catalase test this is the photograph showing the positive and the negative test result of the catalase test next the oxidase test the principle certain bacteria produce the enzyme the oxidase. This enzyme, along with the oxidase reagent, consisting of 1% tetramethylparaphenyldiamine dihydrochloride, capable of turning into the indophenol. This indophenol is a purple color complex. This is the principle behind 
The oxidase test. The procedure. Take the oxidase disc. This disc is the oxidase reagent impregnated disc. Now, place the bacterial colony over the oxidase disc. If there is no color development observed, indicates the test is negative. The example, the E. coli bacterial organism, negative for the oxidase test. In contrast, following addition of the bacterial colony over the oxidase disc produces the purple color indicates the test is positive the example the pseudomonas bacterial organism positive for the oxidase test this is the procedure for the oxidase test this is the photograph showing the positive and the negative test result of the oxidase test next the indole production test or the indole ring test the principle Certain bacteria produce the enzyme, the tryptophanase. This enzyme, in presence of the tryptophan, capable of utilizing the tryptophan to yield the indole as the byproduct. Next, this indole byproduct, once mixed with the COVAX reagent, develop a red color complex. This is observed as the red ring. This is also referred as the indole ring. This is the principle behind the indole ring test. The procedure. This test is performed in the test tube with the liquid broth containing the tryptophan. Now, take the bacterial colony, inoculate into this broth, incubate for 24 to 48 hours. Following incubation, add the COVAX reagent along the side. The formation of red ring, which indicates the test is positive due to indole production. The example, the E. coli bacterial organism positive for the indole test. In contrast, following addition of the COVAX reagent, if there is no red ring formation, which indicates the test is negative for the indole production. The example, the salmonella bacterial organism negative for the indole test. This is the procedure for the indole test. This is the photograph showing the positive and the negative test result of the indole production or the indole ring test. Next, the methyl red test, also abbreviated as the MR test. The principle, certain bacteria in presence of the glucose ferment the glucose to yield the pyruvic acid as the byproduct. This changes the pH to acidic from the initial neutral pH. Next, this acidic pH along with the methyl red indicator develops the red color. This is the principle behind the methyl red test. The procedure. This test is performed in the glucose phosphate broth with the neutral pH. Now, take the bacterial colony, inoculate into this broth, incubate for 24 to 48 hours. Following incubation, add the methyl red indicator to it. The development of red color, which indicates the test is positive due to acidic pH. The example, the E. coli bacterial organism, positive for the MR test. In contrast, following addition of the methyl red indicator, if there is no color change, which indicates the test is negative for the MR test. The example, the Klebsiella pneumoniae, bacterial organism, negative for the MR test. This is the procedure for the methyl red test. This is the photograph showing the positive and the negative test result of the methyl red test. Next, the Vogus Prosker test, also abbreviated as the VP test. The principle, certain bacteria in presence of the glucose ferment the glucose to the acid and then subsequently metabolize to yield a neutral byproduct, the acetylmethyl carbonyl, which is an acetoin compound. Next, this acetoin compound, along with the 40% potassium hydroxide, and the 5% alpha naphthol to form the red color complex, the diacetyl derivative. This is the principle behind the Vogus Prosker test. The procedure. This test is performed in the glucose phosphate broth. Now, take the bacterial colony, inoculate into this broth, incubate for 48 hours. Following incubation, add the 5% alpha naphthol and the 40% potassium hydroxide to it. The development of the red color, 
which indicates, the test is, positive, due to, the diacetyl formation. The example, the Klebsiella, pneumoniae, bacterial organism, positive for the VP test. In contrast, following addition of, the 5% alpha naphthol, and, the 40% potassium hydroxide, if there is, no color change, which indicates, the test is, negative for the VP test. The example, the E. coli, bacterial organism, negative for the VP test. This is the procedure, for, the VP test. This is the photograph, showing, the positive, and, the negative test result, of, the VP test. In general, the VP test, is done, in conjugation, with, the MR test. The bacterial organisms, showing, the MR test, positive, will give, the VP test, negative. And, the bacterial organisms, showing, the MR test, negative, will give, the VP test, positive. Therefore, in general, these two, test results, are, vice versa, for the bacteria. Next, the citrate utilization test. The principle. Certain bacteria, in presence of, the sodium citrate, utilize the citrate, to yield, the carbonate, and, the bicarbonate, as the byproduct. This changes the pH, to, alkaline, from, the initial neutral pH. This is the principle, behind, the citrate utilization test. The procedure. This test, is performed, in the test tube, with the agar slant, prepared with the Simon citrate agar, containing, the sodium citrate, and, the bromothymol blue, as the indicator. This bromothymol blue indicator, at neutral pH, appears as, the deep forest green. Now, take the bacterial colony, inoculate into this agar slant. Incubate for, 24 to 48 hours. Following incubation, if the agar slant, turns to, the Prussian blue, which indicates, the test is, positive, due to, the changes in the pH, to, alkaline, because of the yield of, the carbonate, and, the bicarbonate, as the byproduct. This bromothymol blue indicator, at alkaline pH, appears as, the Prussian blue. The example, the salmonella, bacterial organism, positive for the citrate test. In contrast, following incubation, if there is, no color change, which indicates, the test is, negative for the citrate utilization test. The example, the E. coli, bacterial organism. This is the procedure, for, the citrate utilization test. This is the photograph, showing, the positive, and, the negative test result, of, the citrate utilization test. The MVIC. Reactions. There are, the set of, four biochemical tests. They are commonly employed in the identification of, the members of the family Enterobacteria C. bacteria. The four biochemical tests are, the indole ring test the methyl red test, the Vogus, Prosker test, and, the citrate utilization test. The letter, I, is only for, the rhyming purpose. The E. coli, bacteria gives, plus, plus, minus, minus, for the imbic reactions. The salmonella, bacteria gives, minus, plus, minus, plus, for the imbic reactions. The Klebsiella, bacteria gives, minus, minus, plus, plus, for the IMVIC reactions. So, IMVIC reactions are employed, in the identification of, the members of, the family Enterobacteria C. E. bacteria. Next, the urease, test. Also referred as, the urea, hydrolysis test. The principle. Certain bacteria, produce, the enzyme, the urease. This enzyme, in presence of, the urea, capable of, hydrolyzing the urea, to yield, the ammonia, and, the carbon dioxide, as the byproduct. This byproduct, changes the pH to, alkaline, from, the initial neutral pH. This is the principle, behind, the urease test. The procedure. This test is, performed, in the test tube, with the agar slant, containing, the urea, and, the phenol red, as the indicator. This phenol red indicator, at neutral pH, appears as, the orange. Now, take the bacterial colony. Inoculate into this agar slant. Incubate for, 24 to 48 hours. Following incubation, if the agar slant, turns to, the pink, which indicates, the test is, positive, due to, the changes in the pH, to, alkaline, because of the yield of, the ammonia, and, 
the carbon dioxide, as the byproduct. This phenol red indicator, at alkaline pH, appears as, the pink. The example, the Staphylococcus, bacterial organism, positive for the urease test. In contrast, following incubation, if there is, no color change, which indicates, the test is, negative for the urease test. The example, the E. coli, bacterial organism, negative for the urease test. This is the procedure, for, the urease test. This is the photograph, showing, the positive, and, the negative test result, of, the urease test. Next, the sugar, fermentation, test. Each bacteria, has the ability, to ferment, certain sugars, and, not ferment, certain sugars. To find out, the sugar fermentation, of the particular bacteria, this test is done. The principle, the bacteria, in presence of, the certain sugar. The sugar may be, glucose, or sucrose, or lactose, or maltose, or galactose, or mannose, or, any other sugars. This bacteria, in presence of, the certain sugar, ferment, the yield, the acid, as the byproduct. This changes the pH to, acidic, from, the initial, neutral pH. Next, this acid, along with, the Andrade's indicator, changes to, the pink color, due to, acidic pH. Some bacteria, may also releases, the gases, along with, the acids. This is, observed as, the bubble formation. This is the principle, behind, the sugar fermentation test. The procedure. This test is, performed, in the broth, containing, sugar, with, the Durham's tube, inside it. The sugar may be, glucose, or sucrose, or lactose, or maltose, or galactose, or mannose, or, any other sugars, that can be, added to the broth. For instance, this broth is added with, the lactose. Thereby, to check, the bacteria, for, the lactose fermentation. Now, take the bacterial colony, inoculate into this broth. Incubate for, 24 to 48 hours. Following incubation, add, the Andrade's indicator, to it. The development of, the pink color, indicates, the test is, positive for, the lactose fermentation, due to, the acid production. Sometimes, the bubble formation, may be observed, in the Durham's tube, indicates, the gas production. The example, the E. coli, bacterial organism, positive for the lactose fermentation. In contrast, following addition of, the Andrade's indicator, if there is, no color change, which indicates, the test is, negative for, the lactose fermentation. The example, the Salmonella, bacterial organism, negative for the lactose fermentation. This is the procedure, for, the sugar fermentation test. Next, the hydrogen sulfide, production test. The principle. Certain bacteria, produce, substance like, the hydrogen sulfide. This hydrogen sulfide, along with, the iron salts, like, ferrous sulfate, and, ferric ammonium salt, to form, the ferrous sulfide, as the end product. This is, observed as, the black precipitate. This is the principle, behind, the hydrogen sulfide, production test. Next, the triple sugar, iron test. Also referred as, the TSI test. The procedure. This test is, performed, in the test tube, with the agar slant, prepared with, the TSI agar, containing, the three sugars the glucose, the sucrose, and, the lactose, to check the bacteria for the sugar fermentation, for these three sugars, and also contain, the ferrous sulfate salt, to check the bacteria for, the hydrogen sulfide production, and contain, the indicator, the phenol red. This phenol red indicator, at neutral pH, appears as, orange. Generally, the top, slanting portion, of the agar, is referred as, the slant. And, the bottom portion, of the agar, is referred as, the butt. The three sugars present in the TSI agar, are in different concentration, such as, the glucose, 0.1%, the sucrose, 1%, and, the lactose, 1%. This is about the TSI agar. Now, take the bacterial colony, inoculate into this agar slant. Incubate for, 24 to 48 hours. Following incubation, the agar slant, may, turns to, this type of reaction. This type of reaction, is, observed in, the E. coli. That is, the yellow slant, 
due to acidic pH, at the slant portion, and, the yellow butt, due to acidic pH, at the butt portion. And, the bubble cracks, and, the displacement of the agar, due to, the gas production. Since, the E. coli, ferments, all the three sugars, present in the media, so, a large amount of, acids are produced, which turns, the phenol red indicator, to yellow, both, at the butt portion, and, at the slant portion. This type of reaction, is, observed, in the E. coli. Following incubation, the agar slant, may turns to, this type of reaction. This type of reaction, is, observed, in the salmonella. That is, the red slant, due to alkaline pH, at the slant portion, and, the yellow butt, due to acidic pH, at the butt portion. And also we can observe, the presence of, the black precipitate, due to hydrogen sulfide production. Remember, the butt portion, comparatively contain, more glucose, compared to, the slant portion. Since, the salmonella, ferments, only glucose, present in the media, a small amount of, the acid, is produced, which turns, the phenol red indicator, to yellow, only at, the butt portion. This type of reaction, is, observed in, the salmonella. These are, some of the reactions, observed in the TSI agar, starting from, the left, the uninoculated DSI agar. The middle, the E. coli inoculated DSI agar. And, the right, the salmonella inoculated DSI agar. This is the photograph, showing the reactions, observed in, the TSI agar. The left, the uninoculated DSI agar. The middle, the E. coli inoculated DSI agar. And, the right, the salmonella inoculated DSI agar. Therefore, the E. coli, ferments, all the three sugars, present in the media, and turns, the phenol red indicator, to yellow, both, the butt portion, and, the slant portion. But, the salmonella, ferments, only glucose, present in the media, and turns, the phenol red indicator, to yellow, only the butt portion. Next, the gelatin, liquefaction test. Also referred as, the gelatin hydrolysis test. In this experiment, the gelatin, will be used. Before that, we will see about, the property of, the gelatin. The gelatin, at high temperature, that is, at temperature, above, 25 degrees Celsius, it liquefies. In contrast, the gelatin, at low temperature, that is, at temperature, below, 15 degrees Celsius, it solidifies. This is the property, of, the gelatin. Now, we will see about, the principle, of this test. Certain bacteria, produce, the enzyme, the gelatinase. This is, the proteolytic enzyme. This enzyme, in presence of, the gelatin, capable of, breaking down, the gelatin into, the individual, amino acids, as the end product. This, liquefies the gelatin, and, remain liquefied, even at 4 degrees Celsius, that is, remain liquefied, even at the chilling temperature. This is the principle, behind, the gelatin liquefaction test. The procedure. This test is, performed, in the test tube, prepared with, the nutrient gelatin medium. Now, take the bacterial colony, inoculate, into this gelatin medium. Incubate for, the 48 hours. Following incubation, if the medium, remains, liquefied, even at, the 4 degrees Celsius, indicates, the test is, positive, due to, the liquefaction of, the gelatin. The example, the Staphylococcus, aureus, bacterial organism, positive for the gelatin liquefaction test. In contrast, following incubation, if the medium, remains, solidified, at the 4 degrees Celsius, indicates, the test is, negative, due to, the gelatin is not hydrolyzed, by the bacteria. The example, the E. coli, bacterial organism, negative for the gelatin liquefaction test. This is the procedure, for, the gelatin liquefaction test. This is the photograph, showing, the positive, and, the negative test result, of, the gelatin liquefaction test. The schematic illustration of, the different biochemical test, is available as, the downloadable link, in the below YouTube description. In next video presentation, we will see about, the antimicrobial susceptibility test. Stay tuned, to this YouTube channel. Hope, the lecture is, informative, and, useful. Thank you.